Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Baptism for Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, and a, a special warm welcome to those of you joining us over Zoom or on Facebook. It's wonderful to have you with us, and a warm welcome to the Figueroas who are here uh, for our baptism. It's great to have you with us as well. Everything you need can be found in the service leaflet, and just to note that as it's baptism, the service begins differently. So let's attend to that and say, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, Jesus, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is not what was, no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall now read Psalm 104 responsibly by alternate whole verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships and 
and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father, do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. 
Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. May I speak to you in the name of the true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I'm going to try to record myself on my watch. There we go. For years now, or a couple of years, I have been a regular listener to the New York Times daily podcast. Perhaps some of you are familiar with it. Every morning, it gives a 20 or 30 minute story on a single topic, an in-depth sort of analysis to begin your day. Overall, I have felt like this has left me pretty well abreast of what is going on in the world without also leaving me overwhelmed with the number of things that there are in the news every single day. When it started a number of years ago, the daily, as it is called, was only released on weekdays every morning. But during the pandemic, I think when we were all feeling a little unmoored, they started having a single long form article every Sunday morning. Often it was something that had been published years before, but it was an even deeper analysis and sometimes it was just a story. Over time, I've grown to look forward to these Sunday episodes more than any other episode of the week. A recent version highlighted an article from 2019, a story about a kayaking trip that had gone horribly wrong. Three friends started on a weeks long journey in Alaska by kayak, which itself is uh, pretty impressive. But it quickly became a disaster when one member of the party, John, was hit by a falling tree as they were crossing the river. He was knocked over and he was thrown into the water and he was alive, but hurt in ways that they couldn't quite tell what was going on. The other two friends, found themselves very quickly having to change their plans. Gone were worries about bears, um, and now they were like, how do we get home? John didn't seem like he'd be able to walk, so the two, one of the friends had to go and find help. This one horrible misfortune was followed by a series of improbably lucky breaks that allowed them to reach safety in a way that seemed like it was almost impossible. A Coast Guard ship was passing in the ocean just at the right time to receive their radio communication when there was no one else for miles that would have heard it. A wrong turn when they were returning from their kayaks, trying to return to their kayaks, put them in range of an inflatable Zephyr boat coming from the Coast Guard which was turned out to be the only way they were going to be able to be rescued 
because the helicopter sent by the Forest Service wouldn't have been able to make it to their original rendezvous point. And then the helicopter itself, which didn't have anywhere to land, was able to land on that same Coast Guard ship. Each thing that went wrong somehow aligned to get them out safely. There are a lot of memorable moments in this story, but the one that keep, I keep thinking about is about how the author of the story left with his wounded friend John while Dave attempts to find their rescuers turns to an improbable source of solace and grounding. He turns to poetry. As John is going into shock, uh, the author keeps speaking. He wants to keep John paying attention. But eventually, he runs out of platitudes and can't say again and again, you're going to be fine, because he wasn't sure. And so he begins to recite every single poem that he knows. Keats, Elizabeth Bishop, W.H. Auden, and finally Robert Frost. He saw this as a sort of desperate act of panic, a flailing with nothing else to do. But years later, when he was fully recovered, the wounded John would remember those poems as a perfect act of calmness, part of the serendipity that brought them all out of the forest alive. Something more was happening in those poems than merely the words that were being spoken. There was a spirit of something greater. I wonder how many of you had to memorize any poems in school. I think I came up at the tail end of memorization as a kind of significant pedagogical tool within the American education system. I think I only had to memorize one poem in high school. It was Langston Hughes' A Dream Deferred. I can still remember a lot of it today, and you can try to quiz me on the way out, but it was never something that came easily to me in high school. Somewhere along the way, though, by the time that I was in college, I became sort of romantically committed to the notion that there was something powerful about memorizing poetry, because you never knew when you were going to need a poem. In college, for a couple of semesters, I would write one poem on the mirror of my college dorm room mirror that kind of hung on the front of the closet. And I would stare at that same poem for weeks until I felt like I knew it. For a while, it was Dylan Thomas's Rage, Rage Against the Dying of the Light. And then, for a while, it was Robert Frost. The poem I remember best goes like this, and I will confess I cannot remember it from memory now. But it's his poem, Fire and Ice. Some say the world will end in fire, some say ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. Thinking about the day of Pentecost, I've always come up a little short when I try to imagine what that day must have been like for the gathered people. A group of friends, the fearful disciples and other followers of Jesus, who only 50 days before were huddled in the upper room, were suddenly and violently confronted with the Holy Spirit. A rush of wind and then tongues of fire. What must they have been thinking? Today we remember it as a day of celebration, but I wonder if to them it seemed like it might be the end of the world. Pentecost is a feast in the Christian church, but it comes to us directly from the Jewish tradition, which went in the Greek time by the very same name, Pentecost. It, today, the feast is called Shavuot, which comes from the Hebrew word for weeks. But Pentecost means 50 days. And like our Pentecost, which is 50 days after Easter, Shavuot is 50 days from the celebration of Passover. Passover, which for the disciples and for the gathered community of believers had been a disaster. 
Passover were the, was the days before Jesus' death, before his crucifixion. And it wouldn't have been a terrible surprise if some of these followers of Jesus were a little wary about gathering for the next major holiday of their tradition. So when this rushing wind and tongues of fire came from heaven, at least some of them might have been terrified. What was going on? Was this another disaster? The terrible death of Jesus was only months behind them, and while he had been risen from the grave, he'd also disappeared up to heaven again, only 10 days before. This is the same group who hid in the upper room when Jesus had been killed, and who hid again when he appeared to them alive. They aren't known for their boldness yet, and they've been through a lot. But what is clear from this story in Acts is that after the wind and the tongues of fire, the followers of Jesus immediately begin speaking. Words flowed out of their mouths. What were they even saying? Sometimes it seems like they didn't even know what the words were, or certainly those around them didn't know. We are told that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages that were unknown to them. People from all the world were astonished that these Galileans were somehow able to speak to them. Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, the list goes on. Somehow, the disciples were able to speak to them in a language that they could understand. Somehow, the words of the disciples were able to reach these people, just as the words of the author reached the wounded John. If only for that one afternoon, somehow they were given the words to speak at their time of need. The words that the disciples speak reach the ears of their audience. It's confusing and improbable. And not everyone who was there believed what they were seeing. Some asked, what does this mean? And others sneered. <laughs> others sneered and called the disciples drunk. But Peter rose and spoke in the poetry of their tradition. He said, from memory it seems, the words of the prophet Joel which were so familiar to him. He speaks these words. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a little bit like Robert Frost's fire and ice. In the moment of need, the poetry of disaster. In this moment of uncertainty, it was the poetry of their tradition that helped people know what to do, that helped Peter know what to do. And the poetry helped the gathered community understand itself a new way and find their voice. The Holy Spirit had empowered them to spread the good news of the love of Jesus to all of the corners of the earth. And so this day is remembered as the birthday of the church. The day when the followers of Jesus improbably, but truly, took up his charge to share his message of love with all those who would listen. Maybe some of you remember the story of the Tower of Babel. It's one of our potential alternative readings for this morning, and in it, the people of the prehistoric world are trying to build a tower so tall that it reaches to heaven. They yearn for power and renown that will bring their people together. We talk about it as their pride, but they were also trying to control their environment, to have, find a sense of safety. I know. 
faced with their actions, God sows chaos among them. And they are no longer able, God sows chaos among them by making each person speak a new language. Unable to communicate, they are no longer able to build the city and the tower that they had planned. And in the end, the people are scattered over all the earth. It's easy to imagine this is a story told over generations to explain why there are so many languages and why the people of the earth don't all get along. But it also comes to us like a darker version of Pentecost, the sudden gift of language that doesn't empower people or bring them together, but rather divides them, alienating them from one another. Today, as we remember the birthday of the church, and as we welcome a new member into the family of God, we are also called to remember the powerful role of our own speech and of our own voice in spreading the love of God in the world. Sounds like Layla is already up for the task. We are reminded of the gift of language that God has given each of us to do this work of spreading the gospel. Some of us speak literal languages, Swahili, French, Chinese, Korean, German, Spanish, Haitian Creole, the list goes on. I'm sure there are some that I've missed. But others have been given the gift of more figurative language or speech. Some of us may speak the language of poetry, like Peter, or like the writer of the harrowing tale of the kayaking trip gone awry. Some of us may speak the language of children or the language of teenagers. Other of us, us may speak the language of women or the language of our older, wiser friends. What about the language of people new to town? As members of the church today, we are heirs of the mission that Jesus set before the disciples on that day the mission to spread the good news of God's redeeming love to all the corners of the world. The Holy Spirit, the advocate, has equipped us each in new, equipped us each in unique ways to do this work and will continue to equip us in new ways if we pay attention. My prayer on this day is that each one of you asks yourself, in what way am I being called to spread the good news of love? In what way have I been uniquely prepared for this challenge? And in what way am I being called to speak to new people in a language or style, in a way that seems as yet impossible, but which the Holy Spirit may yet, even yet, empower you to do? I pray that we all find our voice on this day of Pentecost. Amen. I believe Layla is ready. How about the parents and godparents? If the parents and Layla's parents and godparents would please come forward and look at her coming up the aisle. Go oh, stand up there just in case he needs anything. Stand by the edge of the. How are we doing up here? Right. You have a question. Great. And you have your bulletins. Great. So come stand with me. Wonderful. And come stand right here. Great. I'll trade you if you want. I don't know. I got it. We'll find out. Oh, we, Mary Beth? We are having, um, I was going to say that if we One wanted second. to, we do have a baptism happening. So if they want to come down. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. This was. Is it off now? A stole. No. One second. Speaker is still on.
I heard you. Sorry. We've got all the rings of the circus today. So, all right. Who's in charge here? Okay. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Great. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will. I will. God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will. I will. With God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? Then let us join with Layla, who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant standing. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for Layla, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, 
to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Layla, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Layla, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this, your servant, the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, the spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying, We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you, Layla. Peace be with you. Yeah, watch your step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Peace be with you. Peace, Bill. Peace for you as well. Thank you. Peace and welcome, and please feel free to be seated just for a few announcements. The first is how an announcement, just to say how thankful we are. Uh, to have the families here with us for the baptism. It's great to see you. It's great to have you here. Congratulations to Layla and to the whole family. It's a joy uh, to be able to celebrate baptism on this special day of Pentecost. I also want to say thank you this morning. I don't know if Vicky's actually in the room. Is Vicky here? I want to say thank you to Vicky Reris. Uh, Vicky is the keeper of so many of our fun traditions, and one of which is the decoration of this church for Pentecost Sunday. And so I just wanted to say, this is such a joy. She's with the good. That's good news. Uh, what a joy it is to have the church decorated in this way. Uh, Mary Beth just whispered to me, this time off mic, uh, that Vicki is uh, with the Dove Lady, which is great news. Uh, we have this morning as our tradition, uh, the releasing of doves at the end of the service. And that means if Vicki is with the Dove Lady, it means we have the doves, which is great. So when the service is over, uh, and the postlude is finished, uh, please join us outside uh, where we will release uh, three doves symbolically of the, of the Tr Holy Trinity. We'd love to have you there with us uh, for that as well, especially uh, the doves are fun for kids. Uh, it's the same doves every year. I don't know if you all know this. The doves are released here. They find their way home to the South Shore, and then they come back every year. Uh, and we've, every year we talk to our friend who has the doves and we say, are the doves up to the challenge this year? And yes, yes, or well, they're a little weak, but they made it back this year for another strong flight south. So we'll, we'll have them uh, after church. I also wanna say uh, just a word of thanks to, to all of you for your kind words after a tough day 
Oh, maybe I'll just give it to Seamus. <laughs> I, I just want to acknowledge, um, you know, how how challenging uh, it was to, to receive that news. I think we all had hoped for uh, a, a, a different outcome, of course. Um, but I'm extremely thankful that Gideon and Sarah and the family will uh, will remain with us, and I'm, I'm extremely proud of uh, Gideon's willingness to put himself out there. Um, it was a very challenging. Um, period, um, and uh, and uh, just the fact that Gideon and Sarah were willing to offer themselves up um, to that service and the greater service of the church, um, it's I, I'm just incredibly proud uh, of the courage and the willingness for you to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and Thanks, I man. know you'll continue to find your ways to 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 serve Him in a different way. The Spirit works. Um, in ways that we don't know, but I know that uh, there are great things in store for you and for us. And Thank I you, really Charles. appreciate, um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful and relieved Thanks. that you'll, you'll be with us still for a greater time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to go? Well, let me just give the oyster ring music. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all. Uh, next week is a special day uh, for us here at the church. Um, we're hosting the preview concert for the Oyster Bay Music Festival. It's next Sunday at three. I hope you'll come out. Um, we are blessed to be location sponsors and sponsors for the Oyster Bay Music Festival. And this uh, concert is a fundraiser. I believe the concert is free, uh, but we hope uh, that they'll raise some funds to cover uh, some of the costs of the concert series, which is upcoming this summer. And I think there's a bit of a reception too. I believe so. I believe yeah. there's a reception. Um, if you want to come, we'd love to have you. Uh, you can RSVP uh, to the Oyster Bay Music Festival, I believe. Um, or you can just come next Sunday. So just bring a friend and enjoy the, the concert. Mm -hmm. You were gonna say something. Yes, I have two announcements. Um, the first is that um, we, sorry, my mind is like, yeah, Gilead. Um, no, that was the second one. The first announcement is that like we do every year, we are celebrating um, graduations for members of St. John's Church that are graduating from high school and from college. And I suppose there are a few graduate students that I've heard rumors about. Um, so if you have a loved one or you are somebody who is graduating from high school or college or graduate school, um, you can find in the at St. John's a link to just let us know um, who we are celebrating, their name. There's an opportunity to upload a picture and to tell us where they're going on to if we know. Um, so just please send us that information so that we can help celebrate with you. The second thing is, and this is, uh, will be in a month, but just to get you all starting to get ready, that um, during the month of July, we're gonna be having a, a reading group um, or a collective read of Mar Marilyn Robinson's novel, Gilead. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time and I finally just decided to do it while I am at the rains in the month of July. Um, the novel Gilead is a beautiful exploration of faith um, and the story of America and it touches on some themes that are really relevant to our lives today, including global pandemics and many other things. Um, so I just wanna invite you that if you wanna get that book, we'll be reading it. The time is to be determined. Somehow our normal Wednesday evening doesn't seem so appealing in the month of July to me. Um, so we'll find a time to, to talk about it maybe after church or a different time, um, but, or you can just read along, it's really beautiful. Um, so you can have time to get the book. Um, and then, um, I feel like I had one other thing and I can't remember what it was. Oh, I know what it is. Um, uh, if you have, um, we are, um, I, I am slow um, on starting our Grow to Give garden this year. Um, and uh, Warren has been nudging me um, that it is time to get going. Um, so if you are somebody that is interested in the garden, um, 
after the doves are released, maybe we can catch a few minutes together to kind of see who's interested in gardening. And um, our first task is going to be fence building. So if you are a kind of like construction oriented person and don't think of yourself as a lover of vegetables per se, you're, you are very welcome as well. Um, shouldn't be a long conversation, but just to get started. June, June? Scribe, the Lord, the honor due God's name, bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
as we gather for Holy Communion on this Pentecost Sunday, we remember all those who have been commended to our prayers, in particular our armed forces and those serving our nation overseas, especially our parishioner Clark Brennan. And for all those who are ill, Aster Cheng, Chloe Clancy, Scott Clancy, Suzanne Cremens, Mike Daniels, Elisa Dean, Luke Demarest, Nancy Fowler, Barbara Gallagher, Bob Gonzale, Vanessa Gullo, George Harstead, Marie Lee, John Lamatola, Michael Manzalillo, Virginia Martinez, Stephanie McCarthy, Alan Moore, Peter Morris, Don Morangiello, Peter Powelko, Jarrett Pagano, Corey Phelan, Raphael Roper, Jack Santaniello, Joanne Sank, Joan Small, Donna Lee Wheeland, and Connie, and any others we name aloud or in our hearts. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. 
and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through G your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and evermore. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.